Hello dear learners, welcome to the class. Topic for today's lecture is Are Human Rights Universal? Issue of Cultural Relativism Part 2. Human rights which were proclaimed by United Nations in the aftermath of Second World War as Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, which consists of 30 articles and which was signed by almost around 180 country, member countries of the UN. Now in today's lecture, we will be discussing about the acceptance of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Do all the member countries that have signed Universal Declaration of Human Rights accept all its articles? Do the one that haven't signed reject all its articles? If so, why? And if not, why not? We will dwell into this question in this lecture. And we shall be discussing this topic under the following headings. Introduction, Universality versus Cultural Relativism, Debate over Universality of Human Rights, Cultural Relativists and their Arguments, Universalists and their Arguments, Translationism and conclusion. Introduction The 20th century was the century of human rights and the notions of rights making human rights a part of the basic vocabulary of the people throughout the world, especially those who have struggled against tyranny and oppression. Today, human rights have become a forum of ethical yardstick that is used to measure a government's treatment of its people. Actions of a state are judged against these international instruments prescribing certain benefits and treatment for all humans simply because they are human. Students, it has been more than 70 years since the world leaders driven by the desire to prevent another holocaust explicitly spelled out the rights everyone on the planet could expect and demand simply because they are human beings. Human rights are based on the universal dignity of all humans by virtue of their humanity. Dignity refers to the universal aspiration that all human right, humans are entitled to be treated with respect as ends rather than as means, to be recognized as equal, worthy and to be permitted to advance their gifts of nature. These perspectives provide the foundation for the human rights claims. Within the nations, political debates range over the denial or abuse of human rights. Legal documents to protect the human rights have proliferated across the countries. Institutional mechanisms at various levels within a country are being established to monitor the human rights situation. Today, the domestic human rights legislation represents the local implementation of internationally recognized rights that are universal and inalienable. The political consequences of human rights declarations continue to escalate today, raising certain questions on these natural and imprescriptible rights. Even those who wished to embrace such rights had several questions concerning the underlying philosophy of human rights. Students, in the past we have studied about certain rights that is entitled to by virtue of being a human. They are special class of rights which one enjoys simply because one is a human being. They are the rights of the highest order. We also discovered that not everybody can take these rights for granted. They are human rights as proclaimed by Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948 by United Nations in the aftermath of the Second World War. 
it consists of 30 articles and about 180 countries of the 200 member nations of the UN have signed it. They have become a standard of political legitimacy. The principal aim of human rights we can say is to change the existing situations especially legal institutions. One reason for this is that all countries may not agree as to which rights are human rights because people in different cultures have different views about what constitutes basic human rights. So, students this brings us to the intellectual debate between the universalists and cultural relativists of human rights. Universality versus cultural relativism. For decades, there has been a conflict between the theories of universalism and cultural relativism, two ideologies which sit on opposite side of the continuum in relation to their perception of the UDHR which was announced in 1948. Students, the question are human rights universal or culturally relative? Is the declaration of human rights that is UDHR a manifestation of western cultural imperialism? Since the UDHR was created in 1948, these questions have been the subject of policy and intellectual debates between the universalists and cultural relativists. Debate over universality of human rights. There is consensus in the western countries that human rights are universal in nature. Even the UDHR states that all humans are free and equal with no distinction given to their race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or other status. The principle proclaiming the universality of human rights is founded on the notion that all human rights apply uniformly and with equal force throughout the world. So, human rights is based on the principle of universality of the rights across the globe. However, uh, in the non-western countries, there are views against the universality of human rights. Supporters of such view argue that human rights are not universal but culturally relative and cannot override cultural differences that exist between the various cultures and societies around the world. A single document, they say, cannot claim to represent all individuals in the world when their experiences are so different. Now, what is universalism? Universalism is an ideology and perspective which believes that there is only one truth and that all people have the same rights regardless of one's gender, race, culture, nationality, religion, age and sexuality. Human rights are built on the idea of universalism and are internationally agreed upon values, standards and rules which aim to regulate each state and its citizens. While human rights are agreed upon internationally, it is clear that it is the western values of individualism which has shaped human rights, allowing everyone to experience the same positive and negative rights regardless of background and circumstances. Students, universalist believes uh, that individuals cannot be punished based on the country and culture which they were born into and that everyone should be treated equally across the globe regardless of whether a practice or a behavior is considered a cultural norm or not 
based on this principle universalists claim that governments are obligated to provide a system that ensures its all its citizens that they have access to human rights and to protect those rights and its people equally now on the contrary cultural relativism is an anthropological ideology and perspective which argues that there is not one truth or culture which is superior to another when analyzing ethics laws politics religion or any cultural practice cultural relativists believe that all cultures are equal and that there is no universal or correct way of life instead everything is relative to the cultural setting and context students uh, on the contrary the cultural relativists argue that the cultural change cannot and should not be forced on to the people or anyone which is the aim of the human rights or which the universalist claim rather they say that cultural relativist believes that the cultural change takes place organically from within the culture through local activist as a consequence of generational change or generational uh, shifts increased access to the information technology education and not from the external or foreign law makers or non government organizations ngos religious preachings or tourists which the universalists claim which in which the universalist of human rights believe in now arguments of cultural relativists first the individuals who were involved in the process of drafting the udhr were cosmopolitans having international experiences cultural relativists argue that the values of the human rights are based on the individualism and they totally ignore the social groups families next uh, cultural relativists say that the national governments resist international norms that are against local cultures social values and their domestic political interest fourth some rights recognized by the udhr like marriage and religious freedom may be against cultural norms in some non western countries and the policy makers in these countries interpret certain rights as western cultural impositions so students uh, rel cultural relativists again next they say that udhr recognize some rights which are against cultural norms for example saudi arabia has refused to sign or adopt the udhr in 1948 by saying that certain freedoms like freedom or right of men and women to marry the person of their choice whom they choose were against the islamic principles lastly it is often argued that the developing countries often cannot afford human rights as the tasks of economic development and nation building are still unfinished in such countries cultural relativists argue that authoritarianism is more efficient in promoting economic growth and development that is they say is the main idea behind the case of asian values which argue that economic growth in southeast asia is attributable to the values like obedience respect for authority maintaining order their argument is that human rights can be sacrificed to attain economic prosperity economic well being of the nation because for these countries the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights they take precedence over the 
international covenants on civil and political rights. So, there are several arguments presented by the cultural relativists which all stem from the belief that the by ignoring or outlawing certain specific cultures, individuals lose their cultural identity due to pressure and the egalitarian way of western cultures which is similar to the colonial times or imperial times. Arguments of universalists. The universalists on the other hand have countered the claim of the cultural relativists. First of all, they say although the universalists agree that much of the world was not represented while the UDHR was formulated. However, they highlight representation from India, China, Chile, Cuba, Panama, Lebanon and Philippines to show that people from diverse cultures and backgrounds contributed while drafting the UDHR. Also almost two third of the endorsing votes for the UDHR came from the non-western countries. So, students here we see that the uh, universalist though they are agreeing with the cultural relativist that much of the world's population was not represented in the United Nations in 1948 when the UDHR was adopted, but they say that the large parts of African and Asian nations who remained under the colonial rule and the defeated excess powers though they were excluded from the uh, adoption of UDHR representatives of India, Cuba, China, Chile, Panama, Lebanon, Philippines were among the most influential and important members of the Human Rights Commission and they were involved in the drafting of the human rights. The members of the committee that prepared the UDHR draft represented diverse culture and backgrounds. So, even though they might be labeled as some of them from this these countries might be labeled as westernized, their performance suggested that they were familiar with both local and transnational norms and contributed all the insights from their own culture and they possessed an ability to understand other cultures and translate the concepts from one frame of reference to another. So, cultural relativists should keep this in mind while uh, criticizing the UDHR. Next, UDHR is not totally based on individual rights. UDHR highlights spirit of brotherhood, community and society as well. It also recognizes that an individual is constituted and sustained by relationships with others. Thirdly, the tension between universal and local realities is not always contradictory and allows different kinds of change to emerge in certain cases. So, students, while its body that is UDHR is devoted to individual freedom, UDHR starts it's big, it begins with an exhortation to act in the spirit of uh, brotherhood and it ends with the community, order and society. It recognizes an individual is constituted and sustained by through their relationships with each other. It says everyone is uniquely valuable in itself but everyone will be recognized only if the person acts towards every other in the spirit of brotherhood. These details demonstrate that the protection and promotion of human rights are neither totally westerners nor non-westerners business. It says these are everyone's business. Fourth, 
the international covenant on civil and political rights and the international covenant on economic social and cultural rights are like siamese twins inseparable and independent sustaining and nourishing each other many of the civil and political rights protect groups while many of the social and economic rights protect individuals so both the covenants on of human rights that is international covenant on civil and political rights and the covenant international covenant on economic social and cultural rights are uh, interdependent and they mutually function together fifth the culturally relative position is generally defended by authoritarian regimes to stay in power but they do not hesitate to domestically crush their culture whenever it suits their interests rights are violated where there is coercion and violence such acts should be condemned irrespective of any traditional justification so the real culprit is not the culture but coercion every religion advocates values of justice compassion and truth etc former secretary general of the un kofi annan had rightly said that the problem is not in faith but with the faithful so students culturally relative position is universalists say that the cultural relativist defend by authoritarian regimes they promote human rights whenever it suits them and they did not when it did not suit them so it is rightly said that the it is the power uh, fear of punishment coercion which is behind which is the real culprit and not the cultural relativity of the human rights lastly nobel laureate amrit sen has highlighted there is general agreement on policies that help economic development openness to competition the use of international markets high level of literacy and school education successful land reforms and public incentives for investment export and industrialization none of them requires authoritarian government and none of them is incompatible with human rights he has further argued that the so called asian values often invoked to justify authoritarianism are not asian in any sense as asia is culturally diverse he has highlighted that to achieve universal freedom of choice capabilities like education are necessary cultural relativism will not be meaningful where it undermines the capabilities necessary to function now translationism translationism was one of the first presented theories which focuses on finding a compromise between universalism and cultural relativism by applying local context to human right translationism involves translating how local people apply and perceive human rights in their day to day lives making the concept of human rights real and bringing it to a grassroots level translationism makes human rights less abstract and focuses on locals interpretation and applications of the law students the translationists believe that when locals interpret and apply laws human rights come alive and matter it further gives opportunities for the locals marginalized groups and indigenous groups to have their impact and interpretation of human rights on their own this makes human rights culturally acceptable while creating a greater ownership for the locals to tackle the issues hence making human rights more likely to be followed by the people today human rights are backed by the world's preponderant political economic and cultural powers and have become ideologically hegemonic in international society not only do few states today directly challenge international human rights a surpri- surprisingly smaller number even seriously contend that large portions of universal declaration do not apply to them an account that gives somewhat greater emphasis to the limits of universalism thus 
seems called for especially now that American foreign policy regularly appeals to universal values in the pursuit of a global ideological war that flouts international legal norms. The UDHR is certainly not perfect and yes, it can be argued that the document emphasizes individualism over community rights. But does this really mean that human rights are not universal? In their eagerness to promote the importance of cultural diversity and group rights, the critiques forget that all the cultures are composed of individuals and regardless of our cultural upbringing, no two people think exactly the same. Group rights are great in theory, but they cannot be used to suppress individuals who did not fit the hegemony of that group. By protecting individuals, human rights do not diminish the group, but merely ensure the protection of each and every individual within it. And in addition, culture is not static but constantly evolving as people come into contact with new ideas and new concepts because some cultures do not emphasize certain rights at the certain point of time does not mean that it will always be the same case. So students, we see that the declaration on human rights might not be perfect and certainly there are issues regarding the enforcement of such rights, but to diminish them on the claim that they are western and therefore incompatible with other cultures across the globe is very dangerous. What matters is the purpose of human rights, not their origin and their ability to protect the individual interests of the powerless in all the cultures across the globe. The biggest battles between the supporters of cultural relativism and universalism are those related to politics rather than authentic cultural, legal, religious and moral concerns. In particular, both Western and non-Western societies face similar challenges that is the weak implementation of human rights and politicization of human rights. The absence of global enforcement agency or mechanism that permits the continuation of human rights abuses. According to Jack Donnelly, no government find it in their interest to trust and give up their sovereignty, their sovereign rights to a globally uh, set up authority. There is fear that if this global authority or if such a global authority exists, no states will have the power to hold it accountable for its actions. In the meantime, we see that many state leaders find it normal to pay a mere lip service to the protection and promotion of the human rights both at home and abroad. Conclusion Hence, it is necessary to understand beyond the culturalists claim and universalists claim and find a proper reconciliation and also certain culture specific solutions in resolving human rights issues. Jack Donnelly rightly uses the term universalism without imperialism to think of human rights in a better sense. Then universality of rights can be translated despite the myriad or small differences in cultures or religions or any other differences. 
such understanding also facilitates amicable solutions for culture specific issues on human rights then not only universalism can protect culture specific protection but also can question bad practices rooted in culture as bonded labor and female genital mutilation issues and violence against homosexuals etc so students we see that the claims of both universalist and culturalists can be reconciled together in certain cultural specific solutions in resolving the issues of human rights and jack donnelly has used the term universalism without imperialism that is to think of human rights in a better sense the universality of rights can be accommodated with the cultural differences and the mal practices and the evils or which a specific culture pursue in the african or asian nations can be done away by the human rights approach which will make a world a better place to live in so students in today's lecture we have discussed about the claims of universality in human rights and the claims of the cultural relativists we have discussed the arguments of both universalists and cultural relativists and how both these claims can be reconciled together to make the world a better place and uphold the human rights claims across the globe thank you